Hello, hello. Welcome back to the Joyful Life with KJ podcast <laughs> with my terrible co-host, Bonnie Clapp, who is very quickly working her way straight out of a co-host job. Yes. <laughs> How are you this Good week, morning. Bonnie Clapp? Caffeinating. <laughs> Good morning. You're caffeinating. You're drinking out of anti-squaffy cups. I'm drinking out of feet. Oh, you can drink out of that coffee cup. Oh, man. It's, it's got it's feet good stuff. all over it. It's oh. Good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How was your week? Um, Full. Yeah. Full but blessed. I've did got... you have a good Mother's Day? I did. I got to float in the pool like a veal. And my hair <laughs> was out. And I got a pile of delicious vegetables and some grilled meat, and it was perfect. Was it hot dogs? That's my favorite meat. It was turkey hot dogs, and then I got some char-grilled hamburgers, and then I got some fresh-cut veggies for my daughter, and he made grilled zucchini and Yum. salt and pepper. And I put some tahini on there. You know, the I know you don't care for it. And it had, like, this delicious lime chili. Oh, so good. I'm from northern Maine. We just don't do tahini in northern Maine. Go to the ocean and pull out whatever and eat it. We do potatoes what? and lobster. We don't do tahini. And, and every time I try it, I'm like, Ugh. And <laughs> You're rotten. Well, I'm glad you had a nice Mother's Day. You deserve it. And a float in the pool sounds like a dream. Although I would have been freezing because it's not warm enough for a float in the pool yet. Well, in my is- opinion. If you lived in Tennessee, you'd be having cool <laughs> weather. Same. So last week we talked about community and sisterhood and ta- and taking care of the women in our community however we can and meeting needs where we see fit. And then we talked, that was week four. And then last week we talked about our tribe, the shrinking sisters and how we came to know one another and become sisters whether we're still shrinking or not i don't we're trying the stalling sisters Woo! The stalling sisters but nonetheless we're sisters so we have invited on one of our shrinking sisters the amazing cindy wetzel so welcome cindy. i love you we love cindy she's the sweetest soul both of us have ever met I think, Bonnie, don't you agree? She's And she has, hands down, one of the best sense of humor I've ever seen in my entire life. She pulls it out in the least expected places and just knocks you right off your feet with the most deadpan. Straight. And then you go, oh my gosh, that was funny. (laughs) (laughs) How are you today, Cindy Wetzel? I'm wonderful. Thank you. Thanks for having me. We're so glad you're here. I never call Cindy Cindy. She's Cindy Wetzel. I, I don't know why, but I, I cannot know. call her Cindy. It's a year of saying, Cindy Wetzel, add that to my grocery list. Yes. <laughs> yes. Cindy Wetzel is the amazing mama who writes up all my recipes. When I when I spew them out on camera at 400 miles an hour, she goes back and watches the video and says, did she put sunflower lecithin in there and she looks at my spoon and tries to figure out exactly how much I dumped in the in the bowl and writes it up and gets it up on the website so she is much needed part of my admin team as well over at the joyful life with KJ coaching community she's one of my amazing admins along with Bonnie Bonnie claps my admin Cindy Wetzel's my amazing admin And it's the podcast hosted by Cindy Wetzel and KJ. <laughs> Have a great day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm gonna go quilt. You did it. To, you did it to yourself. You keep doing the anti squaffy thing. <laughs> it worked. I'm out of job. <laughs> oh, Cindy. So tell us a little bit about your trim healthy mama journey. How did you ever learn about this crazy trim healthy mama thing? Good old Facebook. I kept seeing really? posts from my um, pastor's mom on Facebook about Trim Healthy Mama. You know, I think what she was doing was forwarding the main page. I didn't understand all that then, but I kept reading about it and reading about it and never dreamt that I would 
give up sugar. I mean, I grew up in a sugar yeah. family, you know, we had all the best recipes and my mom made wedding cakes and pies and cookies extraordinaire. I mean, she was fantastic and we followed in her footsteps happily. <laughs> and uh, then, I, but I was just so tired of the weight and what it did to me. It affected every part of my life. It made me late for things because I never could figure out what to wear. You know, it made me not go outside and be sociable because I didn't want to be seen, you know. Um, it just affected my self-confidence and just everything. And finally at 61, I was like, I'm done. I I'm done. What am I going to be 85 going, I need to go on a diet. You know? <laughs> and uh, I watched my dad struggle with terrible back pain because he carried a lot of weight in front and he couldn't exercise because he had terrible back pain, but he needed to exercise so that he could have less weight kind of thing. So I'm like, I don't want to follow in that footstep. Yeah. So um, in September of 2015, I put on a very large baby shower for someone and put on, you know, what do you call it? Knocked out all the stops or whatever that is. And I said, the next day I'm, I'm going to start Trim Healthy Mama. And I had started with a few breakfasts and little things to dip my toes in. Yeah. And then I just, it was September 13th, 2015. And, um, I just, went no sugar like cold turkey just and I was so ready and it, it just and the weight pretty much dropped off which was wonderful so much so that when the pastor's mom came to visit from North Carolina a few months later she wanted to have breakfast so we go to breakfast at first watch and we sit down and she goes so tell me how have you lost all this weight and I looked at her and I said because of you and she said what and I said I started doing Trim Healthy Mama. Well, it turned out she didn't do it. She just kept forwarding. That's the, crazy. The, the Facebook um, thing. Wow. So anyway, I told her all about it and, you know, how it had worked for me and um, how it changed my mindset about things. But I never thought I would be the person. I just, I hate reading the labels and, you know, I thought it's too much work. I'm never going to do all that. But never say never. I said I'd never live in Florida. We've been here 21 years now. I said I'd never have a cat. God gave us a cat at church, literally. <laughs> we were at church one Saturday night setting up communion, and there was a little tiny white kitten under the car when we came out. Oh. And I said I'd never go to a, one of those big mega churches, and we ended up at the 10th largest church in the country at that time. Wow. So if KJ ever said, I'll never be a coach, well, now we, <laughs> now we know why she is. Right. Never say never. Never say never. That's such a cool story, though, that somebody who wasn't doing the plan brought the plan to light for you and mm -hmm. it changed your life. That is that not a picture of how our actions can impact other people? Things right. that we don't even know that we're doing can change somebody's life for the good or the bad, right? Yeah. What a cool story. Well, and I, <laughs> of course, I ordered the big fat book because the other books hadn't come out yet. And my personality is very relational. So I ate that book up uh, with a spoon. You know, every I could hear their conversation, even though I didn't know their accents yet. But yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I loved the back and forth and the, I, you know, the thing that drives other people crazy about that book or the potties. Um, I lapped it up and, and loved it. So it just shows everybody's different. I have never read that book. I have it. The big one. Have you read it, Bonnie? The big THM book? I was the first one that I got. Yeah. Now have I really? read it all the way through? No. Did I read some of the chapters more than once? Yeah, but I'm not going to tell you which one. <laughs> <laughs> I know which ones. I <laughs> You're one KJ you would skip. You don't know. Mm. Uh, oh my word! I'll read the book, KJ. I have a feeling I'm going to skip that chapter. New York. I <laughs> wow. I bought the book on a used 
website, used book website for like three bucks. And I bought it because uh, Katie had posted some recipe that I was like, I have to have that. I think it was chunky cream pops or something like that. It was like a bowl of cream cheese and I still never made it, but I bought it for that. <laughs> it's just like one running long conversation. I mean, mm-hmm. it's just, it's not like any recipe book you've ever read in your yeah. life. Yeah. I'll have to check it out one of these days in no, my you free won't. time. No, in I your probably spare won't. Time? Yeah, no. Mm-hmm. I probably won't. I probably won't. <laughs> so when along the journey did you recognize the need before I even say that I want to say there is one thing you said that really struck me you said I never thought I'd be the person that would give up sugar I never thought I'd do this I never thought I'd do that but I was ready Mm -hmm. I was ready that right there says so much you cannot jump into this journey expecting change if you are not ready for it, if you're not ready to see big things happen, if you're not ready to literally change everything you've ever learned about nutrition and health, if you're not ready, it's not going to happen. You're not going to stick to it. You're not going to succeed. So I, that really stuck out to me when you said that I was ready. And this time something took hold because you were ready. I love that. I love that. So how did you, when along your journey, did you discover that it was, um, that support of other women was something maybe you were looking, were you even looking for it when it happened? Did it kind of hit you out of the blue? How did that whole thing come about? And now you're part of this community of women. Like, where did that all start for you? Honestly, it started one morning when I, logged onto Facebook and there was this face that seemed to be up this close <laughs> whose hair hair was sticking all over. She had short hair, I think, then. And her hair was sticking every which direction. She had obviously just gotten out of bed. And she had the audacity to get on camera. And I was fascinated because it's like a train wreck you couldn't look away well you would think so but it was more than that it was this girl wouldn't go to the mailbox without makeup and hair done and here's someone who dares to go on camera for who knows who for all the men in the world who are watching you now (laughs) Uh, (laughs) from every country (laughs) um and you were just you and I was like, I want to be like that. I, I admired you so much. It's, I know it sounds ridiculous, but, um, you know, I, I, no, 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 no. <laughs> so it was kind of like a train wet wreck, but it was like, and you were so lovable and so um, relatable. And I just, and I love anybody who's funny and you were funny, so. Um, I just started listening and then you would say, oh, I could make this or that, but I don't have this ingredient or I don't have that ingredient. And I'm at home going, why wouldn't you check that before you go on camera? (laughs) So then I started started making you lists without you asking me to. I just started, I started messaging you grocery lists and then people started picking up on it. So they're like, Cindy Wetzel, put that down on her (laughs) And of course, I loved it because I had a little clan, a little group, a little somewhere I belonged, you know, and um, I feel like I spent a lot of my life not belonging or at least thinking I didn't belong. Yes. So um, I just, I was in. I think we all feel that way one time or time or another, you know, that we don't belong. Right. And I mean, I bet you felt that before, Bonnie, that you've not belonged. Yeah. yeah. I don't belong here right now. Oh, I'm- that's so far from reality. No, I completely understand what you mean. And then it's like, oh, wait, I have a community. Oh, wait, I've got people who care. Hey, Jay, get off the phone. My phone starts ringing right in the middle. Decline. You're so popular. <laughs> KJ doesn't care. Cindy cares. KJ is going to take that call. It was somebody well, looking I to extend my car warranty. Of course. It's all. It's always been one of those. 
oh, that'd be really cool to be part of like a, a tribe of friends. Oh, I'm too weird for that. <laughs> I found the weird ones. <laughs> Well, that was pretty obvious from the beginning, though. <laughs> nice. <laughs> you know, I think, more, you know, more of us are in that situation than we realize. And we are, as, as weird as we all are, we're the average Joes. And typically... We are standalone. We're an, we think we have to be an island. We think we have to do this all on our own and figure it all out on our own. And and it isn't until we really embrace the idea of allowing other women in to do life with and to support us and pray for us and encourage us, encourage us that we really realize how just not alone we are. Like I have not felt lonely or alone a single day since I found the Shrinking Sisters on Marco Polo. Since that day, when we started, when the day that I joined, I have not felt alone since then. So how did you become part of the Shrinking Sisters? I know it was like this. I was kind of late to the gang. There was a group that gathered before I even showed up and kind of started talking every day. What how did that all come about anyway? Do you know, Cindy? I don't even know where it all started. Yeah, I'm I'm a little foggy on it. I remember that, I don't know if it was Tracy or somebody put us in a messenger group. And then I think it was Jen suggested, why don't we do Marco Polo? And I had I never heard of Marco Polo. Yeah, me neither. I feel like I'm technically, you know, somewhat savvy, but I hadn't heard of it. So I didn't jump on it because I didn't know what it was and I thought I don't know how to do that well then one by one people started doing it and I was starting to you know the old FOMO thing <laughs> so, and then when I found out how easy it was and it was just the 14 of us or then it was even less it was more like 10 um you know I could talk to 10 people kind of sort of but staring at yourself on Marco Polo was so painful <laughs> I never realized how crooked my bottom teeth were. So I just <laughs> oh my gosh. So what what does that day to day it's most of the time like we have days on Marco Polo where it's deep, where we're crying, we're talking about the hard stuff, we're, you know, almost avoiding eye contact because we're talking through the hard stuff. And then we have more often than not, our typical days where we're literally just puttering around the kitchen, we're listening while we're in the shower, we're, <laughs> we're, you know, cooking, we're just whatever. We've got an ear pod in one ear and we're walking around the house doing our just daily chores, daily tasks and listening, pouring our coffee, whatever. What does that day to day mean to you? Well, I, Bonnie was kind of this way, too, um, a little over a year ago, because you moved right before I did. But um, I moved from all my friends. You know, I knew nobody here. And it didn't bother me a bit, because my friends just packed up and came with me. And, you know, there was no difference. So even now, I was laying in bed this morning thinking, you know, I, I really need to get a friend or two here, because... I don't know if I ever got sick or anything, there's nobody to know or care. <laughs> you know, it's like, but I'm so content. And Mac loves that I have this circle of friends that he hears me talking and laughing and doing my cooking together or, you know, whatever we're doing, your classes. or um, I wouldn't say he knows people's voices like some of our friends' kids do. They know our voices. Yeah. And who it is, but he does know things like Mary does a newsletter for church, or you know, he knows different things about people. So he'll say, Christie's that she the youper? And I'm like, Yeah. <laughs> so oh, yeah, that's it, awesome. It's meant um yeah, it's meant a lot more time on my phone than I would like to admit, because between all the groups. You know, I'm trying to keep up. I'm kind of like Karen. I want, I want to not miss out on anything. But um, <laughs> and some mornings I have to discipline myself because I like to start out my day in the Word, 
by myself. Um, and sometimes I want to go straight to my phone. Yeah. What are yeah. the girls saying? Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's an ongoing challenge for me as well to wake up. I try to wake up and not start my day immediately on my phone. I want to start it in a, even a short prayer, a little bit of prayer so that God is my first priority before my phone. But I truly feel you know, technology has its good and it's bad and there's phone addiction and all that stuff that can cause troubles. But I truly feel that God is in, you know, he may not be in Marco Polo, but he's in this relationship. He's in this set of friends. He's in this, this, what's the word I'm looking for, Bonnie Clapp? Community. He's, community. There we go. He's in this community. He's grown it to be what it is he's nurtured it he's he's definitely in it and you can feel that bonnie are you watching gilmore girls in the background or what what are you no, looking at so when i do podcast i film in our den which the front window is right in front of our driveway and i'm watching the harsh reality that all of my life is backing out of the driveway at the hands of my son right now. <laughs> Because Roger's taking both kids out to the dentist and to a, a, a lab appointment today. And I'm just like, what happens if they're gone? Like, You still have your oh sister. Oh, my gosh. He's driving right. like, oh, my heart. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Sorry. I was a little distracted. I was just like, <gasps> and Roger's just playing on his phone. He's like, I'm going to get out of the I'm like, what? No. Sorry. I'm present. I'm here. I'm here with you. Terrified. Uh, well, I can tell you, Cindy, that you are well. Every every one of the shrinking sisters is one of our favorites. But you kill Bonnie and I on a daily basis with your amazing personality, your hilarious. Just, I can't even. I yes, you are. I, huh? saw I saw that in your little face. Yes, you are. You are hilarious. And I hilarious. Love like for real. One of the best, one of the best sense of humors I've ever seen in my life. I can go from just a normal mood to just busting in half at one quick-witted 30, uh, two-second response from Cindy Wetzel. So you make us laugh on a daily basis and the love that you show your sisters. We're always getting a package in the mail. I have this pile. Look, this is, this is. Cindy. This is what she does. She's so thoughtful. I have this pile here. Do you see this? This is cut out recipes. She oh, went through God. old magazines and things at her house, cut out recipes. She thought that I might be able to make something healthy out of and sent them all to me. Like who oh. thinks of stuff like that? She's me. I'd been like, Maybe chuck that food. magazine in the trash can. And Not now you Cindy can't have you that food. <laughs> Oh, sure. I got, I'm on the countdown. I'll be able to have it all soon. So did you enjoy your oatmeal? Uh, I actually, I didn't have oatmeal. I had refried beans for breakfast. Oh. All of a sudden I was like, I think I need refried beans. And that's what I had. Well, I'm glad we're all in separate locations. <laughs> and now I'm drinking chicory. I'm so you have refried time. beans and you're drinking chicory out of a foot mug. <laughs> Boy, this is going great for you. Our fearless leader. Oh, well, thank you for coming on, Cindy, and sharing a little bit about your journey. And we'll talk to you again very Lovely. soon, I'm sure. Thanks I for having me. I love you, Cindy Wetzel. I like you better than KJ. <laughs> oh, you so funny. <laughs> Bye. Bye, guys.